Let us start the uh, second lecture on uh, practice. So we will continue playing a, a little bit with MATLAB and developing some uh, uh, functions that will be useful for the project, for the exam project. So today you are going to write uh, the geometric Jacobian of uh, a generic uh, robotic structure. So we will write uh, together the code. I will start and then you will follow for uh, a generic robotic structure. So, and we will try to uh, debug the code for two or three link planner and then for a six degrees of freedom anthropomorphous robot. Uh, after the lecture, after that you spend enough time to try your code, you will find uh, all the material in uh, a compressed file with the number two. Okay, so the name should be practice at zero two. Okay, so we are requested to develop code to write the geometric Jacobi. Let us remind a little bit uh, what is a geometric Jacobian in order to uh, more easily start our classes. Uh, okay, first, this is page 22, but before, let us just start with, with this picture. The geometric Jacobian is a matrix, is a, a, a tool that helps us in understanding what is the linear and angular velocity of the end effector by knowing the angular, I mean, the joint velocities. So, so uh, for uh, angular velocity for a uh, uh, rotational joint or linear for a prismatic joint. Uh, for, as I told you in the beginning, all our exercises will be made with respect to rotational joint only. There is no conceptual difficulty in uh, considering also the prismatic joints, but the code that we are going to develop will be a little bit simpler. So we will consider only rotational joints. The, the point is, okay, I do have Q dot and I want to find the linear and angular velocity. So now this is the, wait, this is, uh, and sorry, I'm looking for the place where the equation is. We need to find this equation, J, and we do know that J can be decomposed for the geometric uh, uh, Jacobian into a number of columns that is equal to the number of joint. So in this case is N. Each column can be com composed by uh, decomposed in two vectors, each three by one, the first is, is for, for the positional part and the second for the uh, orientation part, which provides a contribution to the angular velocities. We will not go into the details, but in order to build a Jacobian, actually what we need is this page. So this page tells us uh, as usual, just let me in interrupt. As usual, since uh, to have a better view, I have only one screen. I don't see you in case the, the, the communication for any reason uh, falls down. In case, just send me an SMS, as usual, okay? So let, let me continue. Uh, we need a systematic way to build the geometric Jacobi. And uh, we will focus only on rotational joints. This means that we will build a Jacobian with this structure, where this will be the, the three by one uh, positional contribution, and this will be the three by one orientation contribution. Now, this is the unit vector representing the orientation of the, of, uh, the frame I minus one 
when I'm building the frame I, okay? And uh, this is the equation that I need in order to compute. So basically, I need to compose all the orientation starting from uh, the uh, base frame that by assumption as the Z upward. Okay, then the position of the end effector, well, the position in the end effector is the direct kinematics. It means that uh, I already know how to do it because this is something that we did last week. And the position of the frame I minus one, so the previous frame. In this case, it is very easy to recognize that conceptually this is the same as uh, asking for the position of the end effector, just the, the computation, the iteration should be stopped at the, the frame I minus one and st um, instead of uh, uh, reaching the end effector. Now, from the conceptual aspect, uh, there, there isn't much to add. I mean, this is. We should write it down. This is something that uh, I'm going to do now in front of you. And uh, we should find a way to debug the code in, uh, in order to check if what I wrote is consistent with the physics, with the theory. OK? So let us start. First of all, uh, I, OK, I should increase the font dimension. Just one second. OK, this should be fine. It's always 18. Let me know if, uh, by chance, this is something that uh, is not uh, visible. Okay, so this is the main that you are going to find uh, on uh, Classroom. Please wait, do not download it right now, okay? <clears throat> now, I always start with the cleaning of uh, the workspace. So just clear the workspace, close the, this is for the figures, figures and clean the common wind. Then I just initialize the robot variables. Uh, in this case, uh, this is uh, something that uh, is already done. We are going to, I'm going to write this together with you, but uh, init uh, is very simple. It's just the initialization and uh, it's another script. So here I have just a flag that select different kind of robots. Only the Denavit-Tartenberg table because uh, for what velocities are concerned, so the theory that we developed up to now, the Denavit-Tartenberg table describes the robot up to now. Then when we will add also the dynamics, we will see that this is not the case, uh, totally the case. Okay, so I have uh, a, a switch on the flag robot variable, and if I, I decide the case one, planar two link, case two, planar three links, case three, anthropomorphic three link, case four, the Yako seven links. And then I define the DH table. Okay, let us start with planar two link. Planar two link, and this is DH, okay? Now, the H means that the first column is A. Then I have um, alpha, D, and theta. Theta is the variable, but in this case, it means that this is for me the initial configuration. I can use my draw robot uh, command in order to visualize the robot. This is a, a possible 3D view of my, of my robot. That's it. The first is zero, base frame, frame one, and frame two, that is also equal to the end effector in this case. 
the position of joint one is zero. I can verify here because this is theta one. And the position of joint two is 45 degrees or a, a pi fourth. And it's here. This is uh, the number where I do recognize that this is 45 degrees. Okay. I will always use draw robot in order to have a, a visual representation of the configuration and to check if something is wrong or 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 maybe I'm uh, misunderstanding or uh, some of uh, of the data. For example, if I play around uh, with uh, with those runner tree link, and then this is the H zero zero zero. It means that uh, draw robot uh, now is just one line. Okay, uh, sorry, this is one line. Let me make it a little bit larger. Uh, base frame one, two, and three. Let us make just a three D as an example. Okay, zero 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 for the for the for this robot is not very nice. So let us say in it, and then for example, uh, Here I change uh, joint uh, joint tree parameters uh, theta, so Q to forty five degrees. I just represent the robot. Okay, no, this is not very visible. Let me do it with two. Yeah, and this is it. So now it's a little bit, uh, I'm, I'm changing something in 3D. Okay. So we can use uh, the robot uh, and we can also use uh, homogeneous and direct kinematics because we already developed in last class. So homogeneous, uh, homogeneous transformation matrix between two conse consecutive frames according to the age. Input is the row, generic row or of the DH table, and output is the homogeneous transformation matrix between two consecutive rows. Okay, this is something that we can use. And then direct kinematics, we, are, we can use it. Direct kinematics is simply the, uh, the function that allows us to compute the homogeneous transformation matrix from the uh, base frame to the end effector frame. Okay, so now let us start on our function that is main. I'll change the name because I want to develop with you. So this will be Or is save as here. Mm -hmm. Save as. <clears throat> I'll call it the main uh, zero to temp. This is just uh, for today. And uh, I'm going to use init, but I'm going to develop by myself this uh, Jacobian uh, temp. Okay, so I'll, I'll just change uh, the name of the function in order to, to, to develop it 
from scratch. Not really from scratch. We'll see a little bit now. I'm going to use the existing one and comment with you rather than write it down. Otherwise, we the time is not sufficient to do it. Okay, so new, sorry, new function. I only need, I only need a um, DH as input in order to compute the Jacob. I don't need anything else. So the, the DH table of my robot. Uh, this is the structural function. I save it, control S. The name by default, it takes the name that I used here. And this should be the name of the function that will use this. So main zero to temp, this is the name that is going to be used. That's fine, okay? So now let me write some com some uh, help here, some comments. In order to save a little bit of time, I copy it here from the existing one. When I do write uh, the help or the comments of a function, I write uh, what is the generic description of the function, computes the geometric Jacobian. In case there are some limit or uh, something that should be finished later or some, something like that, I write it down. So here is only rotational joints. In that way, if I'm going to use it for a robot with a prismatic joint, I'm sure that uh, this cannot be the, used. And then I use the the comment in order to have the syntax of the function. So function here, I copy here the line. So I copy the line with the exact name. J is equal Jacobian temp, temporary, the H. What is the input? Input, name, dimension, and uh, meaning. Output, uh, name, dimension, and meaning. Now the output will be six, no matter if my structure is only is planar, I don't care because I can give uh, the, the zero rows. Why do I write it a uh, function with C six as a dimension for the output? In that way, it is more uh, generic. I can use it to whatever is the robot. Then if it is a planar to robot, I just extract the rows that I do need for my purposes. Okay, so this is the start of my uh, of my function. Then uh, I, I've done something in order to to simplify a little bit my 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 the writing of my code. And what I do is okay. First of all. I take n from the dimension of the DH table. And I do know that DH table has a certain number of rows that is equal to the number of joint and always four columns. If I ask sides, so now size DH is seven by four because the last uh, init that I used was referred to a seven links robot. Say, if I change here init for the planner to robot, so uh, planner to links here, and I ask for size dh is two by four. So this is the number of joints and it means that my Jacobian start asking for this one. Okay. Now, I do, I do need some variables. First of all, this is the output. And uh, I define J as uh, a matrix of a proper dimension with all zero elements. As I told you, in MATLAB, there is no need to define the variables before their use. In case it is first time that you 
define or use a variable, MATLAB tries to assign a certain dimension to it. A uh, clean code, however, defines the dimension of uh, the matrices. It's is, uh, much better. So J is the Jacobi. Now, I do define other two matrices, kind of, kind of strange, because P is a zeros, three line, three rows, and n columns. Why do I need to define this one? Let me have a look here. Here. In order to implement the Jacobian, I need the position of uh, the frames, so the region of the frames for all the frames, okay, from zero to n. So zero is uh, zero, 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 and uh, one, two, three, until the end effector. And this will be collected in this matrix here. The same for the unit, vec the unit uh, uh, vectors pointing uh, to Z. And if I want to be sure that, if I want to be sure to, to, to be a good programmer, I also write a comment in order to not forget what I'm doing. So what I just told you is written here. Okay. Simply what I told. Okay. Okay. Let us start writing our first. I uh, I would like to indent this because I like to I like to indent. Code. Okay, because this is within a function loop. And then uh, we can also run this in order to check for bugs, but we haven't done anything. So I assume that uh, nothing. Nothing uh, happened. And of course, J is zero because actually I run this function here. So init is okay. And uh, Jacobian temp is just an empty function where the output is this J here that has been initialized. So I haven't done anything basically. Okay, but that's fine. Now I do need to implement these equations here. If you have a look at this one, actually, this is the direct kinematics. This is a direct kinematics because I need the position and orientation, not only on the end effector, but also all the intermediate frames. So I do need to uh, take the code from uh, the direct kinematics exercise and uh, elaborate it a little bit and we will see how. First of all, let me make this consideration. I need the homogeneous transformation matrix. I know that it is a four by four matrix, okay? But I need uh, this matrix from a one to zero then from two to zero, because I need position and orientation also of this, three to zero, four to zero, and so on. I do need to rewrite the direct kinematics with all the intermediate homogeneous transformation matrices. From the programming aspect, it could be appropriate to define a variable T that is equal, now let me write this as zero, four by four by n. What does it mean? I have a four by four matrix, and then I have some slices where the first, let me say, floor is joint one, the second joint two, the third joint three, and so on. Actually, MATLAB allows to have multi multi-dimensional matrices is very uh, simple and also in intuitive uh, up to three because it's really uh, matrices put one above to the others okay
Okay, uh, I'm I'm trying to use the same uh, the same uh, variables name that you will use when you will download your code. So this is t zero t with respect to zero. Then. I need to compute all the homogeneous transformation matrices. I need to compute uh, in order to compute the position and the unit vector z for all the for all the frames. Okay, so what does it mean this here? Let me let me check. First of all, I'm just saving a little bit of uh, tapping by uh, copying the, the command already existing. First of all, I am developing a fourth cycle from one to n, so for all the joint. And for each, I compute the homogeneous transformation matrix, and I put the output of this function on a four by four variable, okay? Here, I remember that this is the syntax in order to select the i row of the dh table. It means that the first call, this will be the transformation from one to zero, the second from two to one, and so on. Three to two, the two consecutive joints. Now, if uh, the loop is in its first count, well, the homogeneous transformation matrix from one to zero is exactly the homogeneous that I already computed. So it means that this is a, a simple assignment. Actually, I may also write uh, this way. Look at uh, the syntax. This is the first floor of my slices, and uh, it is equal to the matrix that I already computed here at line 24. Okay. When, however, I'm in the uh, from the second to the last joint, I do remember that the homogeneous transformation matrix is obtained by multiplying the existing homogeneous transformation matrix, and the existing means the one computed up to i minus one, multiplying it by the current one, this one. Very simply, I'm putting the slices in each, there is a transformation with respect to the base frame. Now, I know that uh, I can extract the position On this matrix, now this is equal T0, so T0, yeah, the position is uh, row 1, 2, 3, column 4, so 1, 2, 3, column 4, of the slice I. This is the position. Okay? And what is uh, the unit vector z well it is extracted from the same matrix but now is uh, uh, column three position one two three okay this is my my z so with this fourth cycle <coughs> i'm computing the direct kinematics the same as we have done last week, with the only difference that now I'm collecting all the position of the frame's origin and the unit vectors of Z. This is the only difference with respect to last time. Okay, Let me check if it is the same. Yes, it is the same, but it is correct. Okay, now, this is what I need to implement. And in my code up to now, I do have all the unit vectors and all the position. 
I have to. Now I have to build the column of the Jacobian. Okay. So I have to implement a cross product and here just to copy this one. I need the, another for cycle. Okay, uh, the first one, for the first column, the way I indicated my code, for the first column, I need to write it uh, expressly. So, this is a, a unit vector of the base frame, and this is zero, zero, 001 by construction. This is the position of the base frame, that is the origin by construction. And in that case, line 36, 37, this is exactly this equation written with respect to the first column. So Z0, Z0, position on the NF factor is N minus position zero, it means Cross product between Z0 and now position on the end effector is taken from the last column of this matrix P that I just computed here and minus P0. So this is the first column of J. This, cy this uh, fourth cycle should start from Q because the first one is already here. So I make it start from two. And now I have to implement the same, but with respect to the previous one. So let us start. J, Q, comma, I is equal. So this is uh, I minus one, it means uh, means that I have to take uh, I minus one column from this matrix here. Position on the end effector is always the same, and but this is again I minus one. And this is again I minus one. Okay. Okay, we have done. Let me check if uh, from the syntax error something happened. No, nothing. So if I write J here, I have some numbers. Now the point is, what is this matrix? Are those numbers correct or not? Now it's not easy to make uh, uh, the bug uh, for uh, in robotics because we have a lot of variables and uh, I mean from the syntax aspect uh, if there is a syntax error basically MATLAB just stops working but if I made a mistake for example uh, let me say that uh, here is not zero but is one this is not a syntax error so MATLAB would never stop for this or if uh, this is not i, i minus one. So I should uh, try to, to debug the code by resorting to my knowledge of the uh, theory. Okay, so let us try to understand a little bit, uh, for example, this, this situation. Uh, it is a planar Turing robot. What is the configuration? Let me let me write it down. So this is uh, ma main, uh, the main that we just developed. And here I write my uh, DH in order to visualize it. Okay. Okay. So this is my 
robot configuration. Okay. How can I understand if it's Jacobian is correct or not? Well, let me make a draw on my board, for example, here. Okay. Let me try to make a, a draw in order to understand if uh, I can try a little bit to, to debug my code. Uh, okay, just a moment. Okay, so I design my, my robot planner, okay? Uh, just to, to check if you are awake or not, Z is going out or in with respect to the, the screen. This is the screen, X, Y, Z is going out or in. Out. Z is going out because if I consider uh, the right hand rule or the, the, the uh, anthropomorphic vector, it means that Z should see X uh, superimposed into Y in the counterclockwise direction. So out means that this is Z. Okay. Now, Okay, this is my robot. Theta equals zero means that uh, the, the first uh, uh, joint is aligned with X and then theta is equal 45. This is the angle 45 degrees. Fine. Now, let us remember the Jacobian and its uh, geometric meaning. Okay, it means that if I consider a Q dot, for example, uh, uh, Q dot is equal one zero, this implies that VE is equal, well, we, uh, VE is equal exactly the first column of J, so is J, P, one, J O one. Okay. Now, what does it mean that uh, Q dot is equal one zero? It means uh, that I am uh, moving this one at one uh, okay radian seconds, and this is one is at zero. So this is zero. It's not moving. I need a little bit of, uh, of visual imagination. If this moves at one radian seconds, instantaneously, what is the velocity of the end effect? Let us consider. Instantaneously, this is a circular motion and the velocity of the end effect is this one. This is the direction. This is the linear velocity. The angular velocity is going out uh, from the screen. Is this one? Now it means that the position. This JP one. This is a vector. This JP one is something like a certain number, a certain number, and zero. And J01 is something like zero, zero, always one. This is what the uh, geometry tells me. Let us come back at my debug. This is the situation. Obviously, the draw 
is a little bit different with respect to mine. And uh, I have to check if my J is uh, somehow consistent with my consideration. So this is the contribution. Look at the column J, the first column, negative along Z, positive along Y. And actually, this is the case with uh, a vector that is more uh, aligned with the Y with respect to Z, zero along the Z for the linear. Angular is zero, zero, one. Okay. Let us make the same consideration for a movement of the second joint. So in this case, This is zero, and this is one radian seconds. I can easily verify that the, the instantaneous motion, always uh, a circular motion instantaneously, is around this axis with this radius in that direction. But now I can also say something more because since uh, this is 45 degrees, I think that uh, it's easy to see that this is also 45 degrees. It means that I here can verify that the contribution of the second joint to the, um, uh, the, lean, the end factor linear velocity as the same, this is negative and this is positive, but with the same amplitude. And always zero on Z, zero, zero, one. Okay? Okay, let us have fun and check some other I changed the initial configuration. Now, theta, this is uh, z, the theta that we use at 0 0.45. Let us consider, uh, for example, uh, okay, 0, 0, that is trivial. 0, 0 is trivial. Now, may I ask you what is the velocity? that, that um, where do you expect the linear velocity of the end effector to be if I move the joint velocity of one radian second here or here? The direction, not the amplitude. My, my, uh, my robot is all scratched. And I move this or this. The linear velocity of the end effector, where is it pointing? Anyone? If I provide instantaneously a certain velocity to this joint, the end effector here, the linear velocity, where is it pointing? This is not different from the disc, the example of the musical disc that we saw.
Anyone that want to, to have a guess? Look at this, uh, this one. If I'm, if I'm moving uh, this joint instantaneously in that direction, the velocity of the end effector is basically parallel to y. Right or not? It's the circular motion. This is what uh, we already we already saw ex with example of the musical disc, and instantaneously. This is the same also for the second joint. Let me check if my Jacobian contains this information. Yes, because this is zero. This is the component of the linear velocity along y then zero, and then this is the angular. This one is a little bit uh, smaller due to the fact that we know that uh, the linear velocity is given by the cross product of uh, this length multiplied by q dot. In this case, q dot is one. So it means that, of course, this length is uh, larger than from the second to the end effect. Let me try to do it again for for uh, for uh, for example anthropomorphic tree link in order to verify that uh, we do have somehow okay this is the anthropomorphic tree link uh, look uh, in this case uh, of course, those are not the physical link because it's, uh, it's just a very simple function that I wrote in order to visualize the link, okay? So this is the only purpose. But I can verify that this joint here is vertical. I know by, because I know the anthropomorphic tree link. If I make an instantaneous movement to the first joint is around Z, here I can verify where the linear velocity is pointing. And let me check by the Jacobian if this is true or not. My Jacobian is pointing toward the y direction. Is it true or not? Yes. Look at that. I'm making a rotation around z, and I'm going toward negative y direction. I'm sorry, uh, mm, positive y direction, because it's the inertial y that is this one. The convention is RGB x, y, z, okay? For uh, the color, just in case. The angular velocity, if I move uh, the, the first joint, so the component four, five, six of the first column is in that direction. And let me check here. Yes, zero, zero, one. So it's fine. And a debug made, let me say, in very, very simple way is something that now say, okay, it could be reasonable, your Jacob. Okay. So now, now uh, I stop recording. <laughs>